Leak code problem 7, reverse integer. Given a 32-bit signed integer, reverse digits of an integer. Assume we are dealing with an environment which we could only store integers within the 32-bit signed integer range of negative 2 to the power of 31 and 2 to the power of 31 minus 1. For the purpose of this problem, assume that your function returns 0 when the reversed integer overflows. So 2 to the 31 power minus 1 is 2,147,483,647. Negative 2 to the 31st power is negative 2,147,483,648. So we must stay within range of these numbers. So here's an example number when reversed is the closest possible number that we can use to get to the max integer number. This number when reversed will be the same as max int except for the last digit 7 will be a 1. We will see how this is useful to look at later. So let's reverse our number. Here we pass in the example number into our reverse method. Here's our reverse method taking in an integer of x. So the key part of this method to look at is that we're taking modulus of x to get the last number of the number that we passed in. And then on each iteration of our loop, we multiply our previous result by 10 and then add the remainder number that we got from doing x modulus 10. And this will shift the last digit of the number that we passed in by one position on each iteration. Since we have a basic idea of how this method works, let's look at the space-time complexity. Since we are only dealing with a few basic variables and not an array, our space complexity is big O of 1. Since we are essentially looping through a list of digits, based on the number that is passed in, our time complexity is big O of log base 10 of x. You can see this is true as for every power of 10 we gain approximately another digit. For example, log base 10 of the max integer value is equal to approximately 9.3319 and there are 10 digits in the max integer value. In reverse, 10 to the power of about 9.3319 will bring us back to the number of max int. So now let's step through the method. We set our initial result to 0. Then we have a while loop to go through each digit of the number passed in. We will end on our base case when x is equal to 0 because every time we loop through, we divide x by 10. Since we have positive and negative integers passed in, we cannot do x is greater than 0. We must do x is not equal to 0. So here we have our number that we passed in, and you see if we take modulus base 10 of this number, then we get the number 2 at the end of the number. Here we have our bounds checking for our max and minimum values. I'll look at this again after we walk through the rest of the function. So on our first iteration, we take our current result, which is 0, and multiply it by 10, and then add the remainder, which is 2. So now our current result will simply be 2. And since now we have 2 in our result, we must remove it from the original number, so we divide x by 10. Now on our second iteration, you can see that 2 has been removed, and we take modulus of 10 of the current number. Now we have a remainder of 1 which 1 is the last digit in the current number. So now we take our current result 2 and we shift it over by one digit by multiplying by 10 and then we add our remainder that we just got by taking modulus of the current number. So now our result is 21. Now we remove the last digit just like we did before by dividing x by 10. And we will continue to do this until we reach x is equal to 0 thus our entire number will be reversed. So now let's look at our edge cases. Now that we're looking at the last digit to be reversed, we must compare the current value to the max integer value divided by 10, because once our current value is multiplied by 10, we could have integer overflow if it is greater than the max integer value. So in this case, the next number, since the remainder is 1, will end in a 1. So in this case, the numbers are the same once you divide int max by 10. Leak code also points out that you can check if the result is equal to the max value of integer divided by 10 and the remainder is greater than 7. 
Conversely, we do the same thing. We check if the result is equal to the min value divided by 10, and then we check if the remainder is less than eight. Because of course here, if we append eight to this number in our result, that is greater than the max integer value. But in the case of C-sharp, this is unnecessary because the highest last digit that we can pass in is a one. This will be true in other languages as well. However, this other condition is useful to look at if you're looking at different types, like the long type, where you could have a result equal to the max value, and then you would have to check the last digit. So here we get our number reversed, 2,147,483,641. The last digit in X is one. Once we divide by 10, we will be at zero and we will break out of our loop and then we return our result. And that's about it for reversing an integer. An alternative approach because of the range of the integer is to multiply the negative integer by negative one. If X is equal to the min value, we simply return zero. Otherwise, we can multiply x by negative one, and then it will be a positive integer. And this number will have the same constraints as the regular positive integer. So as we loop through, all we have to do is the positive integer check, and then after our loop is over and we reversed our number, we simply check if the bit is flipped, and then we can multiply the result by negative one and return the result. This is simply just an interesting alternative to the integer version of this problem. As mentioned before, if you're looking at longs or a different data type, then you'll want to do the original version right here of this problem, the actual leak code solution, and add the or case. But since we're dealing with integers, we do not need to use this or case, and we don't even have to look at the negative number case. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and a comment below. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.